Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Late Night Enforcers. This is episode 11, where we're going to be talking about the... Um, <clears throat> shit, sorry about that. We're going to be talking about the Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. Um, we're going to kind of do a quick synopsis run-through of the entire series so far, and then we're going to do a, uh, a brief review of, uh, of Staked, which is the most recent book in the series. Um, we will get into spoilers when we get there, but we're going to go ahead and call them out like in advance we'll pause before we say it and then in the show notes or in the uh, in the video description or somewhere along those lines we're going to put the timestamps to where that happens so if you don't want to hear any spoilers and we're not going to cover like super huge major spoilers but we will talk about some stuff that does happen in it we're not going to talk about the ending um we, but we will talk about some things uh now i'm rambling now i don't know where i'm going with this ryan how you doing buddy I don't think... <laughs> i'm doing pretty good man i don't think anybody ever knows where you're going when we start this off. Because I honestly don't think we ever know where it's going to go. Um, it seems to be like we always kick these off and we just let it run. That tends to be how it rolls. Yeah, even um, though we spent about 23 yeah. minutes at the beginning talking through shit, trying to make sure we know what we're going right. to talk about. And then, what and are then we, we going to do? What's the format? <laughs> let's do it. Like TV. Fuck it. Let's just wing it. That's how we do it anyway. We hit go and it's like a deer in the headlights. It's like... Um. Hi. <laughs> hi, <Come> world. <laughs> so, <laughs> before we go digging into um, the books and what we're talking about here on the Late Night Enforcers, we always like to have an adult beverage while we're um, conversing about things along those lines. And since we are talking about the Iron Druid, and there was a character in the early part of the series that was a big fan of Irish whiskey. We're both drinking whiskey tonight. Um, now, since Ryan is drinking something interesting and new, I'm going to have him talk about what he's drinking because I've never even heard of what he's having. Thank you, sir. I actually hadn't heard of it either before it showed up in the mail. So if you've paid attention to us this year, you know that I am currently getting a Whiskey of the Month Club type situation. Uh, I'm on month two. There was an issue with delivery last week, but I got it rectified, and or so, my wife got it rectified. Um, she was super nasty at the damn mother Facebook and hey magic um, I'm drinking a I'll hold it back here so you can see a little bit better uh, high west whiskey campfire whiskey is what it's called uh, to look at it, it is a straight rye straight bourbon blended malt scotch whiskey uh, bottled by the high west distillery in Park City Utah Ooh, it's handwritten on here too. batch number 15 I 1 1 Bottle number 2691. So I think that's kind of cool when they actually hand write on the label there. That's pretty nice. 46% alcohol by volume. And let's take a sippy sip. Oh, wow. That's, um, that literally tastes like you're sitting at a campfire. It is that smoky. Yeah. And I like it. It's very good. It's smooth. Um, I think as opposed to the uh, the one I had last month, I don't even remember what that one was anymore. 72. Uh, yeah. Um, that one um, that one was – it was light. It was smooth, but it was very light. It felt very thin. This one is a little bit thicker, a little bit meatier, uh, but it is definitely – it's got that nice – it's almost got a um, – almost like a single malt taste um, that's been aged, but I mean – I don't, it doesn't have a specific age on this one is to how old it might be. There's a whole long blurb on the back that I'm not going to read because nobody wants me to read all those words. Um, yeah. So highwest.com if you want to order that or mouth.com if you want to do the whiskey. They have bacon stuff. They have so many like subscriptions. You can get stuff monthly. It's crazy. I think they even have some beer ones too. So you might want to check that out. I might have to check. Did you say mouth.com? Mouth.com, as in that.com. Okay. So like the character from the Goonies. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Deep cut, baby. Deep cut. So, well, that's really cool. Hopefully you and I could get together sometime soon and I can uh, steal. I'll save three, some for you. Three or four shots off of that. So uh, the whiskey that I'm drinking tonight, I actually... I tried it years ago at the North Texas Irish Festival. They do a whiskey tasting thing there. I tried it years ago and was not a very big fan of it. Um, but while listening to, because I have, we both listen to the books 
in audio form. So of course we're gonna we're gonna get into that uh, when we start talking about the books. But um, while listening to the Iron Druid Chronicles, there was a character by the name of the Widow McDonough who was constantly drinking Telemar Dew. And uh, when I when I tried it years ago, my palate was was not refined at all. I was drinking a lot of Blue Moon and Guinness. Period. Now I've been drinking a lot of craft beers, which vary in 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 styles, tastes, flavors, things along those lines. So now I'm able to pick up more. And uh, so on a whim, once I, I went ahead and picked up some Telemore Dew, just kind of like, hey, uh, the Kevin Hearn makes it sound delicious, or well, Kevin Hearn writes the words, Luke Daniels makes it sound delicious. So I was like, let me give it a shot, and I actually I really really like it nowadays. I, I don't know if it's the weird mental. Um, was it hypno hypnotic suggestion that's that's been given to me that I should like it because I'm Irish and a druid and and really dig into it but it I really dig it I mean um, sometimes I will uh, God, what the fuck is the term for it crack it shock it put some ice in it whatever the fuck the terminology is for this shit but I like it I like it straight I like it real straight <laughs> and not too long ago I found out how easy it is to just open the bottle and drink directly from that bottle I tell you what that was a scary <laughs> scary fucking day for me but. You know, it's smooth. I believe the terms you're looking for are you currently enjoy it neat. Neat. Um, okay. And straight also works. You could say straight up. That also, I mean, if you're in a bar, you could say straight up. But typically, it's just, you know, give me two fingers of whiskey, neat. Um, or you would like it on the rocks, which is typically, if you want to do it right, no more than two cubes. If you want to water it down too much, you can go through more. Um, good bartenders will drop a ice ball or a just one large cube in there and let it sit. That's what I use is uh, just one of the ice balls. Um, I need to get me some whiskey stones that you can just throw in the freezer and throw those in there. And it's like drinking it neat since it won't water it down, but it will keep it cool. So it's that kind of happy medium. Um, I definitely want to try those out, though. I keep seeing deals for that stuff, and I've never – spring on it and pick it up so i, I definitely need to um well I know, yeah. the, I know the next time we get together i'm gonna go ahead and pick up one of the aged bottles like i think the oldest i saw was either 16 or 18 years old i'll go ahead and pick up one of those and we'll have a good night your wife will hate me more or well you'll just have to park in the driveway and i'm gonna put her car in the front yard That's in, right, the front, in the front yard <laughs> I didn't say when. <laughs> yeah, it would just be at some point in the middle of the night. In Allen. Oops. Uh, well, fuck it. It doesn't matter. I guess I probably already go. Oh, oh. In Allen, it's going to get all weird. Um. <laughs> no, people are, people are going to come looking for you and shit. <laughs> Bring it. I actually, I, I actually grew up in Allen, so I fucking hate the cops out there. I'm sorry. If you're an Allen cop and you're listening to this, I don't hate you. I hate the cops from when I was a kid in Allen. Okay. There was this. I think most people hate Allen PD because their general reputation because of that time frame of when you and I were growing up was um, when they were the biggest dicks. Like they were looking for reasons to grab people and harass them for one reason or another. Yeah. Usually it was just because they were a minor. Oh, you're a minor? I'm going to go ahead and pull you over for no apparently good reason. Right. Uh, but this is not a rant about the somewhat poor reason I don't like authority figures in the city of Allen. This is about the Iron Druid Chronicles. So, real quick, I warned Ryan I was going to do this, and he's given me a couple of minutes to go ahead and say this. Um, I, I am actually a druid. Uh, I am a solo practitioning druid, which basically means I I do it myself. I, I do everything that I my shit is done by myself. I don't have anybody else come and tell me how I should be how I should be doing my worship or how I should be doing my stuff. I'm using terms that are commonly known so that people understand what I'm saying if you're not a druid. Um, but everything that I do is actually just something that has, has come to me. So finding a book series that kind of at least touches on enough of it to where I'm like, oh, I know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. You don't have to explain that. Go on. You don't have to explain any of this. Um, is, is really cool. And also so I like that it's not where it, it's it's to the point where it's like kind of making fun of as if the author didn't know what the fuck a druid was. And now it's just like the class from World of Warcraft up on the page that somehow became an actual person or some shit. Um, 
but uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the religion actually started back in Ireland. Uh, it has more to do with um, worshipping the earth for what it gives us uh, instead of worship, worth <laughs> instead of worshiping any other like higher deity because everything comes from the earth we come from it and we return to it at some point um, so that's that's the basic idea that's that's that, that's Gaia uh, for lack of a better term and sometimes you'll see Gaia in other things like Final Fantasy 7 um, all sorts of other things but I I, I find I, I find it great to actually have a book series that I can kind of relate to on on that kind of level and and has a very interesting story when it comes to that kind of stuff now I'm rambling so now we're gonna go ahead and get into the the kind of quick synopsis of the series um, how I actually started I don't know how Ryan got started on the series but how I got started on it is uh, me and Ryan started working together at this company that will remain nameless and um, I happened to be talking about my religious beliefs to a couple of people and he overheard me and he goes, Hey, why don't you check out this book series? Um, and I was like, well, okay, sure. Why not? And then I was like, nah, I, I might not, I might quit looking around. Like you don't remember this conversation. I remember it quite vividly. And, um, and so, you know, I kept putting it off and putting it off because I was, I wasn't, I wasn't financially stable at the time, so I was kind of like, ooh, $11 for an audiobook. That's, that's a little steep for me to be spending $11 on. Like, I was eating a lot of ramen noodles, like a lot of ramen noodles. And, um, and so he gifted me the first book, um, which is uh, the one that I've got here in my hand, which is Hounded. Um, I, I have physical copies of two of the books because if I ever get a chance to meet Kevin Hearn, which I just missed my chance. So mad. So mad that we missed that. Mad. Yeah, well, you had a viable reason. My reason is because my job doesn't like its employees and makes us all work on Saturday. If anything, so, I think you had a more viable reason than I did. Well, you were parenting with the, Yeah, but I could throw a kid in a car seat. Yeah, but that kid would have been that kid at the signing, and nobody likes that guy that brought that kid. I can yeah, tell you that. that that's a, mm, great break. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, for those listening on SoundCloud later, if you hear us get quiet, it's because we get drunk. Yeah, we're we're taking the swig. swig of, it sounds like I drank quite a bit of that whiskey before we started, doesn't it? I talk all <laughs> you definitely day. Got those. I so, talk all day, so I'm I flub a lot when it comes to to the to the late night communication uh, enforcement stuff that we do. <laughs> That's right, enforcing shit. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, so. Did you finish your, like, how you got, I know that you got to the point where you had the copies of the book and all that, and that's where uh, you, like, yeah. yeah, I just basically stated, yeah, that you gifted me the first audio book, and I listened to it, and from there on out, I just, I just, I had to have them. I, uh, I was breaking into my neighbor's houses, stealing their, 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 uh, their valuables, and, and selling them at pawn shops, just so that I could get my next Iron Druid fix. We'll we'll make sure to edit that part out so that the Allen PD doesn't come find you. Oh, I don't live in Allen anymore, so I mean they can they can <laughs> come. The grudges. Shit. So real quick, let me <laughs> real quick story. Being being an open druid in Allen back in the late nineties, early aughts, more the nineties. Um, I'm sure most cities went through this at some point. Um, it was near the time that I was graduating high school. There were cat mutilations going on in my town. And of course, being an open druid or what some people refer to as a pagan, uh, people immediately told the cops, well, it's, it's gotta be that, that, that Ian guy, because you know, he's a pagan. He, uh, murders animals when that's like the furthest thing from the fucking thing that I would be doing in that particular situation. And then and a life. yeah, right. And a, uh, a detective from the Allen PD actually came to my house at one point and questioned me about it. And um, I, I'm not going to go too deep into what I said to him, but I, I, I actually laughed in his face and then educated him on my religion while, while we were standing there, he was a, uh, he was, there was egg on his face by the time I was done talking to him. So I'm rambling and we're not even like 20 minutes into this thing. Well, no, that's kind of how we do it here. Um, oh. So to get into how I got started on the series, I, I frequently will search through iTunes for audiobooks just because as much as I enjoy reading or I used to enjoy reading paperback or hardback books and actually, you know, flipping those pages and getting deep into a series. Um, 
I don't have that much of a luxury to do that anymore. I just don't have a lot of the time that it would take because I would dive into a book and be done in a day, depending on the length of it, two days, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But I, uh, I like, I had long drives to work at the time. Uh, cause at that point when I started listening to it, we, we were both at the same company, but it wasn't the one you're at now. Uh, it was at the one before that. Um, so I, I still had a long drive and needed something to do. I had all the same music on my phone and it wasn't keeping me entertained anymore. And as funny as Russ Martin is, sometimes you just got to take a break. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I downloaded, I just searched, I, I enjoy like urban fantasy stuff and fantasy book storylines in general tip. And I think I actually found it cause I was searching for a new vampire series to listen to. And in that course, I ended up finding a vampire series and this one, uh, which we'll I'll tell you about that one later. We're not going to do that one right now. Um, but I, um, I found, you know, the first three books are well out already. I mean, they've, they've been out for a while. Um, so I, I read the synopsis on Hounded and listened to the, you know, one minute preview that they play on iTunes. And um, I dug that in that preview, it summed up enough of the series that I knew it was going to be humorous. I knew that it was the primary goal was to just essentially in a respectful yet not respectful way, kind of mock everyone on the planet. And I enjoyed the facet of everything is true and not to jump into the Assassin's Creed thing, but like that everything is, you know, nothing is true. Everything is permitted type situation. I like that type of philosophy in this part I heard really, you know, it really just jumped at me and to run into the rest of the series, essentially all the, all the world's religions are true. Every story is real. And that whole realm of existence does truly exist because we make it. So we believe in it enough to make it. So that's the basis and the premise that the book is based on other than the fact that it's, you know, the main character is a 2000 year old druid. So that, that, that's what turned me out of the book. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, but when you hear Oberon talk and we'll probably get a little bit more into this in a little while, it, it, that's just funny. I don't care who you are. Every, yeah. when, when you, when you stare at a dog, and if, you know, if, if you're an animal person and you're sitting there petting on a dog and you're talking to the dog in your own head, you're talking back to yourself in a different voice. And that's the voice that every dog has. It doesn't matter what they are. And that's the voice that this dog in the series has. So. Yeah. And if you've ever seen an actual Irish wolfhound, the voice that Luke Daniels gave to Oberon is the exact voice that I would have, I would have thought of when when thinking that a dog could a dog like that could talk like of course if you got a chihuahua it would be like a, a, a very small a squeaky voice but but irish wolfhounds are fairly big dogs and, and i'm not trying to say i don't mean this in a bad way when i say that it kind of reminds me of how scooby got his voice but scooby sounded for lack of a better term retarded compared to oberon uh because of his weird speech impediment um i, I like the fact that oberon actually has like speaks fairly clearly i mean of course he sometimes doesn't know what word he wants to use or sometimes uses words in the wrong spot or mispronounces things but that's fine i can't i can't spell shit for shit anyway so it's totally fine if a dog uses shit i can't even remember like an exact thing you would think i would have listened to the entire series over again just to be prepared for this but it's funny it's that you know you you Gave me, in our last episode, you gave me shit because I didn't do my research on Deadpool, which is true. Um, but I, I, I listen to this series all year. Um, I will run from the from Hounded all the way up to State now, which is the new one that just dropped uh, almost a month ago now. Um, and then sometimes I'll run backwards because I think it's kind of fun to hear the series in reverse. And right now I've been piecemealing it together because I'm actually missing Shattered out of my collection on my phone. Um, and I've got, uh, I just finished, I finished hammered and I finished <clears throat> hunted. I finished hunted today and I've already done steak twice and I'm going through tricked. No hexed, uh, which is the second one in the series. Yes. Um, just cause I wanted to kind of 
let's jump back into the earlier days because it's interesting when you you don't really notice this too much when you read through it and people who read the the words actually you know they might differ they might not because you put your own voice to a character's head when you read everything's in your head you, everybody gets their own voices and they stay that way if you're knee deep in a or head deep in a series almost when you listen and you have you know super how Luke Daniels is uh, run through his, a series and you listen to it from beginning to end it's weird to see how the voices shift even within one book versus just book to book to book the main character um, whose whose name whose real true name in the series is Sheehan O'Sullivan who typically goes by Atticus O'Sullivan because he changes his names like 18 different times but the main character's name is kind of remained Atticus throughout the entire series his voice alone has changed many different ways. And going back to Hexed now versus just listening to Hunted and Staked, it's a dramatic difference. Yeah. So that's also like um, Flittish. Um, Flittish shows up really early on in Hunted um, and speaks a certain way, but then she shows up later on in, I want to say it was Shattered. Was it Shattered? Okay. So she shows back up in Shattered and has more of an Irish accent than she did in Hounded. She also she shows back up in Staked, and it's a deeper Irish accent. And earlier in the book, it wasn't as thick. But I've, I've noticed that she, her voice has gotten a lot harder throughout the series. And that's because of what happened in, in Shattered um, when dealing with Fand. Um, so... Uh, just to kind of do a brief synopsis of the whole series to get to the point where we're talking about here so people can under because we're bouncing around the entire series at this point. Yeah. Um, and so for people who are either listening on SoundCloud or watching us on YouTube and you haven't paid attention or even you don't even know what the hell this, this series is, uh, it starts off in Hounded. And Hounded is essentially the beginning of the tale where Atticus explains who he is, 2,000-year-old druid, he explains all religions are real, kind of runs through multiple ones, um, and then starts interacting with other characters of the book. He's got a Irish, 150-pound Irish wolfhound named Oberon, who is the oldest Irish wolfhound in existence at this point because being a druid, he can – he's you know got fun, nifty little things he can do with herbs and other natural items in the world, and – makes this tea called Immortality, which keeps him young and alive, uh, as well as keeps his dog healthy, vibrant, and alive. Uh, he can make it to keep him looking 21 years of age, which he does, because it makes it easy for him to move from city to city and place to place and blend in easier versus being 30 or 40. You know, when you get to be that age, people expect you to have a more respectable job or other than running odd sole proprietorships like in a – bookstore you know in, in a cult bookstore with an herbal area or yeah. a silversmith shop or something like that um so in hounded the premise of that book specifically is that he's running from angus Og, which is the out of the two a it's he's the irish god of love interestingly enough the guy loves no one which is weird um, except for himself the reason he's running himself. yeah right pr pretty much um the reason he's running from angus Og is that he long time past i don't remember the specific years because it's been so long since i've listened to hounded i'm mad that i don't have that one on my phone um he uh he kind of knit a store uh, a stored store <laughs> a, i didn't know that's story. where he got third eye books from <laughs> <laughs> he stole a bookstore in tempe arizona <laughs> from an Irish god. um no so he uh he stole in a sense a sword in the middle of a battle from like all sneakily and shit from from angus uh and kept it and then from that point continued to run like he couldn't use a whole lot of magic because the fey or fairy however you want to call them um would be able to find him at that point so he ran all over the globe he had to move every 10 years which gets explained in a small little novella uh in between Shattered and staked, which is later on, you know, the most recent two books in the series. Um, I don't know if you actually. No, no, I, I didn't catch that one, and they quickly referenced that one in in yeah. stake, and it was just like, damn it, I missed something, because that's like the the crow. 
yeah, what was it? Two no, crows it, and yeah, a raven. But there was another one where it was uh, the grimoire the, of the lamb, which was which could actually be listened or read to first because of yeah. how it doesn't really impact anything, but it doesn't also set things up. But there's things that. I'm sorry, I'm kind of making you get off topic here. There's things that carry over from book one to book two that don't get referenced in the Grimoire of the Lamb, so it could technically fit between one and two or before one. It just depends on when you want to put it in there. Well, and and the the Crow one is specifically is more between um, Hammered and Tricked. Tricked, yeah. Yep. Because that one has to do with their little meeting in Oslo. Uh, and we'll we'll get to that. Um, cause we're going to briefly hit every book. Uh, so essentially running through hounded, um, I will get to the end of that because I mean, I don't care if I spoil that the book's been out for a while. Honestly, if you, if you haven't gotten into it, that's fine. Everybody understands, but it's not going to ruin the book by telling you the whole thing. Um, essentially a lot of shit goes down with the local police department. Angus is, has found Atticus in Tempe. And at this point is starting to make his life a living hell in an effort to make him come out and confront him. Uh, Atticus ends up killing Bress, which is Briet. Briet is currently, quote unquote, the first among the Fae. She's the reigning Irish god. She runs the whole gamut in Tirnanog, which is their plane of existence. Um, and he ends up killing Bress and on, in the middle of the street. One, which is interesting how that works out in front of the <laughs> Madonna. Yeah. Right, right. Right in front of him or her. Sorry. Um, and, and let's see after that, he ends up having to run into the mountains because Angus Ogus is, is, has opened a portal to hell to summon a whole bunch of demons to go hunt down Atticus. He did that with the help of about six witches, which is half of a coven that lives in Tempe. The other half of the coven actually helped him find them. Uh, and then Atticus went up there with his lawyers, which happened to be werewolves in a giant wolf pack. Interestingly enough, the one vampire, a part of the the law, law firm, stayed out of that one. Um, and at the end of it, he ends up killing Angus Ogan, death, actual, you know, the, the quote-unquote, you could say the Christian version of death or kind of the normal personification of death that everybody else tends to picture. Yeah, Stop, that's how they – Black robe, everything – uh, takes Angus Og to hell. So Angus doesn't even get to go to any of the Irish planes for death He had because the Morrigan wasn't able to claim him. Where he was killed and why he was killed put him in the quote-unquote Christian hell. Well, uh, so now real quick, just to make sure, because you did kind of just glean over it, so I want to throw this out there. The reason why death, the Christian death, was there was because Angus Og brought him there so that if... Um, if he was able to best Atticus, he could he could have that death take him uh, instead of the Morgan because uh, Sheehan has a deal with the Morgan where you don't take me, we have very violent sex on a random occurrence choice when it comes to well, your it was, uh, the, the, the deal was actually, you don't take me and I'll teach you how to bind a cold iron amulet to your aura. Um, which Speaking of is, which... We didn't even yeah, talk about why he's either. called the Iron Druid. So let's let's hit that real quick before we dive into Hexed or 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 the um, any, yeah, anything it else. Comes up, it, it it comes up within the first twenty minutes of Hexed where it it comes into play. Oh uh, well, no, I mean explaining why he's an Iron Druid comes up within the first like five minutes of the first book when you're listening to it. Um, so basically, what it is is when it comes to dealing with magic, iron like Earth Iron. Um, is a good way to negate magic. Um, so uh, let's just say, for example, if I was wearing a suit of iron armor, which would be really fucking heavy, um, and, uh, and someone was shooting magic at me, I could possibly deflect it. But if I was also a magic wielder, I would not be able to cast magic unless I had taken the time to integrate my magic using with that that iron. So the iron that he wears is is what is referred to as cold iron, which, correct me if I'm wrong, is because it's from a meteorite, not from Earth. And um, and so he took 
like what was it centuries like 300 years out of the time that he was alive he took making it so that this iron amulet that he wears he kind of infused the iron into his aura so he's very very protected against magic attacks uh he's also protected against divination which basically means people can't um divine or scribe where he is or kind of see where he is by by magical senses um it um it also makes it so that anytime a fairy touches him they burst into like ashes just immediately because of because the aura that's kind of just like around him is is basically made of of iron um also on his necklace are are silver charms that he uses as as like ignitions for some of his spells so that he doesn't have to constantly speak them out in, in old Irish before he can get shit done. But that's going off a little bit too deep into it. So back to this. So he killed Angus Og, took his head and the Morgan didn't come and take Angus Og. So the Christian death took him down to hell and right. the demons are free. Right. Demons are free roaming around Arizona with the last command and binding that was placed on them because what, <clears throat> and Ian being the druid, he can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but based on all this from the book, what druids do is they can bind and unbind natural elements. Um, as long as the, the one rule that they have that is woven into the tattoos that actually bind them to the earth itself um, is that you can't use the earth's magic to directly harm another living creature. It doesn't matter what the living creature is. As long as it is a true living creature on the planet or within one of the planes, it doesn't matter. You can't use the Earth's power to harm that, that creature. So to provide an example that is actually referenced in the book, if, if a rhino charges you, you can't use the Earth's magic to kill the rhino and like bind its bind its blood vessels together to cause them to burst in, in, in a way and make it implode. Um, what you can do is use the Earth's magic on yourself to boost your speed and stamina and strength and move out of the way before you get impaled by the horn. Yeah. Um, and that's because you're preserving your life, which is a right. life of the Earth, by using that and magic. And the magic is targeting yourself and it's not causing harm. Just because, and then you can kill the rhino with the sword and that's fine. That's the normal circle of life type situation. Um, you can't, there's very thin line and distinct loopholes that Atticus actually goes into when he begins to train another chick, which we will get into here in a minute. Uh, to jump into this, the, the second book, Hexed, um, I'll briefly run through that one and then I'll let Ian pick up uh, if he wants to on the next one. But uh, like Hammered, personally, is my favorite. Um, and I'll explain why later, but Hexed is where multiple gods of different pantheons are tracking Atticus down because he decided to stay in Tempe after killing a god. Because no, he had no reason to run anymore. That's true. I mean, no, nobody was really out for him, and that's the whole reason he was running anyway. Um, so he, um, he kept getting hit up by multiple gods to go and say, hey, good job. You won. Well done. Don't try this shit on me because shenanigans. Um, and then go kill this guy because shenanigans. Which was so, more commonly Thor than anybody else. Yeah. Thor was brought up more than anybody else. And within the first 20 minutes, the vampire shows up and says, hey, come help me kill Thor. Um, and then witches try to burst him into – essentially make him spontaneously combust – but instead his amulet glows so hot it actually starts cooking his chest. I just finished that part on the way home. Um, and then uh, Oberon gets to smell a demon right after that. Yeah, that's when the giant pinwheel beetle shows up. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of throughout the book it, kinda, it goes through that little adventure of let's figure out which group of witches is trying to kill me. Um, let's get the right people that I have here that I care about protected because they know about them. Um, and then towards the end of the book, Leif Helgerson, the vampire from his law firm actually helps him take out the rest of that coven of witches, which is, which are currently summoning demons and having sex with them to make demon spawn so that they can actually throw this spell out that they're trying to use. Uh, it's the only way they can do it. So they basically jump into a corporate building, take down half of it, 
taking out these witches. And uh, turn and away, that, basically. Because they're yeah. throwing like stone golem heads through floors and ceilings. And RPGs and grenades and shit. Oh yeah, I forgot about the RPGs. <laughs> I miss I miss that nosy ass neighbor neighbor. I totally forgot about him. Mr. Submergian? Yeah. Yeah, Submergian, that was it. Um he, uh, he he was funny. Um he was not, you know, he was annoying to him, but he was funny. He was he was beneficial. He served his purpose. That's um, very true. He but, his his arc was done. There wasn't really much more that you could do with him. Nope. He was a gun running terrorist guy and was giving guns to coyotes and shit and had RPGs and random fun flak jackets and all the whole he basically had the garage that I want. Yeah, um, I was about to say he had your dream garage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, uh, so Leif Helgerson ends up securing Atticus's help to go kill Thor and in return helps him dispatch a coven of witches. Leif gets caught on Hellfire, ends up living, which is weird for a vampire because um, he's a strong motherfucker. Uh, and then essentially that book ends and we get to go off into Hammered. So now, Hammered is the first book in the series where you really, really start to get deep into the mythos and and um, and 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 visualization of the other pantheons that exist within the religions that were created by man. And I only say that because at some point in the series, they do mention that all these gods were created by man, who was created by Gaia. So I'm not I'm not trying to like dig down. And I'm I'm on my second. Uh, listen through stake right now and i just kind of passed that where it's like man made or man thought up uh because we're running up to where bria and atticus are doing something we'll talk about that in a minute we're probably 15 um but so hammered is the first one where you really start to get into it so it kind of really opens up with uh with atticus going to asgard um and he is going there specifically to well, at the beginning of it he's going there for what he calls a um uh like a recon mission um but what he's actually going for is something that that we kind of gleaned over we didn't talk about a certain character that came up in the first book and hell we didn't even talk about granuel um god i'm gonna say her name wrong <sighs> the witch the the big bad mm -hmm. witch that squishes that one chick's head Akula Sakharan uh, is her last name. Laksha Kula Sakharan. Laksha. Yeah. Okay. So she uh, she basically made a deal in the second book with Atticus that she would help with something. Or was it the first? No. She made a deal with him in the second book to take out some fucking, what the hell were those guys called? The ones that tie in with the, the Greek god of drinking and partying. Bakkins. The Bakkins. She had to... <laughs> and it were all over the place still. Atticus had to get the help of of this witch. God damn it, I've been drinking too much. To uh, kill these Bakkins that showed up in the area. You want me to do it? You no, I'm good. It? I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> and uh and so they needed um so they made the deal that he would go to Asgard and get some gold apples for her so that she could live a, a long life in the body that she's in because she's the body jumping witch. Um long story. Uh you, you read the books. Um so uh it kind of boils down to he's going to go do this because again he agreed with Leif Helgerson that he would go kill or take him to Asgard um uh to to get his help with the uh, the witches of the uh the three auroras. I don't remember what their name was before they got disbanded and reformed or whatever. Um, but it was one of these things where he was doing that. So here you are moving along the world tree roots and things along those lines. Uh, you meet the squirrel for love of God. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, who unfortunately meets his untimely demise. Um, Atticus. Squirrel. Rattatos. 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 Thank you. Ratatos. Ratatosk. Right, a toss, uh, whichever. Uh, so he gets in there. You get to you get to listen to the description of of Asgard as seen by Atticus. Uh, he goes ahead and takes care of a few things. Comes back out, um, gives Laksha her her apples. Ooh, I got her name right. Uh, and then just kind of you know. Then from there, we start talking to Leaf about getting the team together to go into Asgard. And this is where you get to meet one of the greatest characters in this series of books so far, one of, and that would be Pyrrhun. He is the most excellent thunder god I think I have ever heard of in my entire life. You mean Pyrrhun? 
Pirun. Yeah, I'm gonna keep yeah. saying it like that because that's how Luke says it. Okay, I, I, I thought I thought you put a K at the beginning of his name. I was about to come through the screen at you. Kirun? Yeah, I was. I, yeah, no, I would have. I would. I am shit buttered. <laughs> you are the shit buttered. Drink what? Eat bear. Bear has more meat. <laughs> ah, such <laughs> such a great character. Um, so from there, we basically have a team of gods and immortals that have been wronged by Thor because Thor is a giant fucking douche nozzle. He has done all sorts of shit from here, hither to there. Basically, he's the one that helped um, Leif Helgerson along with trying to find the vampire that turned him into a vampire by killing his family on a whim. He's uh, a, he's a, and I quote, and I quote, a total chode chomper. Which character called him a total chode chomper? Was that Atticus? Yep. Oh, that, 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 oh I mean, that, that's completely right. Get on my level, son. Go fuck yourself with your <laughs> looking shit up on the wiki as we're talking. Me. No, I'm actually trying to tweet Kevin Hearn to see if he wants to jump in on this right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. If he shows up, this is going to turn into a weird blubbering you, thing. We would, Kevin, see, we would quite literally both squeeing right now if he showed up to this. Yeah. Kevin, if you don't show up to this and you're watching this right now, this is just... 5% of the panic that you would have had to deal with in this particular situation. Um, he's probably asleep by now. He's, he's, a, he's a rather rather prompt gentleman. Very it kind of depends, like, depends on where he is. If he's back in the West Coast or on Colorado, Seattle, like Oregon time frame, um, he might still be up. Well, that's very true. Uh, where was I? Oh, Hammered. So there we are. We've got this crew of great people. I can't remember the names of everybody, and I'm so sorry, but we were introduced to a lot of interesting characters. Perun is the one that kind of really carries on through the series, so that's that's kind of the one that I wanted to make sure that I talked about that in his shit-buttered statement uh, in a later book. Um, from there, we go into Asgard. Oh, let me backpedal real quick. So this is important. Before we go into Asgard, uh, Atticus leaves Oberon with a Widow McDonough. Let's just, let's just stew on that. So then they go into Asgard. Big epic fucking battle falls. And and by the end of it, they got their revenge. We lost some characters. Leif Helgerson's head was demolished by Mjolnir. And, um, and luckily enough, Atticus was able to put his head back together. They brought him back. Uh, unfortunately, the wolf that was the pack leader at the time died. Um, so then we've got Howl Hulk that becomes the um, the the pack leader because of of fuck I can't remember the guy's name I'm so sorry this is like a really Gunner Magnuson Gunner Magnuson thank you see this is why I have Ryan around I have the voice he has the knowledge um and the, I Unless have the, I, have, I have the fuck you I have the face ah oh. uh, no no ladies. So, um, as I was saying, so we get back. Vote down in the comments. Who's better looking? <laughs> yeah, please do, actually. I don't know how you would do that on SoundCloud, but feel free to put in that Ian or Fiend. I don't care which name you use is is the most handsome and debonair and suave-ass looking motherfucker in this, in this thing. Um, so, you get back. Um, shit. Thor's dead. Uh, you go to pick up Oberon, and Oberon says, we got to get the fuck out of here. Something's wrong with the Widow. And ends hammered. What, hammered, which which was a very strong book in the series. Now, before I let Ryan start in on Tricked, because he likes Tricked, I yeah, would like to say... Tricked is kind of that filler book for me. Okay, okay. So, see, then there was a miscommunication when we talked about it at one point. Again... Don't take this the wrong way. I really love Kevin Hearn's work, but I think Tricked so far is the weakest book in the series. Um, it does tell an interesting story, but it is very centralized. There's not a lot of going here or there. It's this all happens kind of right here type of situation. Well, and I think the reason that is is because he was he. You're essentially taking a break. To train Granuel. Granuel. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, to to train her up in becoming a druid, and he needed that in order to progress the rest of the series. Because the rest of the series is what it's essentially 
him fighting off, staving off the onset of Ragnarok, which <clears throat> there's something that Ian didn't get into in Hammered. He just kind of gleaned over. Oh, fuck um, you with the way that you put that, as if I did it intentionally. Do you see how much of the Irish I've been drinking, we lad? Oh, you shut your mouth, boy. I'm a Don't you even get me fucking started. Oh, we're going to do this now. You know, you know that I can't kind of argument. Argument. You can't even get into the shite with me. I'll start throwing it around and you won't be able to keep a conversation going. Don't go with this shite. I swear to the Christ. You oh. fucking... Oh, Bring it to me, damned! You're you're a you're gonna fucking shite yourself! I tell you no, what. Oh, you're fucking trying to act like you know some shite that you don't know some shite. You're gonna start shaking your little fucking drink around, and with your giant little a bowl of ice that you got to have because your wee vagina can't handle a little bit of the whiskey without having some water in it. Because I'm gonna call you Lando Calrissian because you're a gambler that doesn't know how to drink liquor in the right process. There's no ice in it anymore. I don't give a fuck. It's, I don't give a fuck at all. Neat. It's it's not neat. Tell him what to do. Damn it, I started slipping out of the accent. I can't. <laughs> give me doing okay. Russian. I can hold the Russian until you lose it, but man. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So, so the, one thing that, the one thing that actually started all this off with essentially the end of the world getting nearer um, is when at it was Ratatosk is carrying Atticus up the world tree, up the roots of Yggdrasil. Um, he goes through a little squirrel hole, and as he does so, Atticus essentially jumps off him, and right outside that, at the the well of Namir, there are the Norns, which are three giant fucking fate weaving goddesses. It's their whole purpose is they is they weave fate, and they also keep hell bound in her realm she can't go wherever she fucking pleases she's stuck in hell I don't ask me why her name is hell and she's in hell it's the norse it is they thought the shit up um so he ends up having to out of self-defense kill them in order to make sure he stays alive to go get the golden apple for laksha run his little scouting plane and then get out um, that is really what kicks all of it off. So knowing that, that brings into the fact that Oberon says the Widow McDonough is different. The, re the reason that she's different is because she died. She died. Her soul went off to Christian heaven. Um, and hell actually inhabited the widow's body. Fed Oberon for a couple of days, kind of, you know, made sure that he was alive or whatever. But wouldn't drink whiskey, wouldn't <clears throat> wouldn't talk to Oberon about any of her problems anymore, uh, anything like that. Which wouldn't do any of the normal stuff. She just would go through the motions, right? Um, and in Tricked is when you find this out because in Tricked, what happens is Atticus and Granuel go live on an Indian reservation supplied by. Coyote, who is a, who is essentially one of the first people from the Navajo tribe. Well, I mean, there's multiple tribes, but the general Native American religion, and there's multiples based on different tribes, but he's one of the first people, and he's he's their trickster god. Um, so he, hence the name, tricked. He, um, so he gets them onto his was area. To, wait, hold on. Was that out. supposed to be laughing? What? Hence the what? name trick. He was it was that was that supposed to be you laughing at that? That was Is supposed that... to be sarcastic laughter. No, oh. yeah. no, oh, okay. Not not actual laughter. I mean, if no, anybody's been real... our ten episodes, they've heard me actually laugh. Yeah, real quick before we get any further, the reason why Atticus and um, shit, I almost called her Guinevere. Fuck, man, I am Guinevere. Wow. Uh, man, the names just are not sticking in the head tonight. Um, Granuel, there we go. The reason why Granuel and Atticus are helping them is because, um, Coyote decided to, or, well, so Atticus asked Coyote to assist him in making himself appear dead to all the Thunder Gods, uh, because after killing one Thunder God, a lot of Thunder Gods were afraid for their safety after that. So Atticus asked Coyote to help him, um, 
basically fake his own death. And Coyote uh, took on the form of Atticus with um, took Fragoraw, which is the sword that we referenced earlier from the first book. Um, he went out there disguised as him, basically shape shifted into him, and was uh, was killed by all these guys. Holy God! I feel like a <laughs> oh, excuse me, one second. So sorry about that, guys. I had a cough, and I didn't want to do it directly into your ears, so I hope to God I hit that mute button, and I didn't just cough into your ears. Um, so he died for Atticus, so he had to do something for Atticus. So they are at this um, this Indian reservation while, uh, while they're building a wind power plant i'm totally gonna get that shit wrong like windmills that collect the wind and turn it into energy and shit and uh, the whole idea is that uh atticus is supposed to move gold to that area so that it's easy for them to uh to mine it and use it as as capital for for putting up the windmills and and, and getting that running please quit putting your penis in front of your camera thank god okay so so there's that's why atticus is there <laughs> but he is also, you know, he's he's also there to help with the fuck. What is it? The 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 way ceremony. The um, the blessing way. The blessing way. Thank you very much. All right, now you take over. You got your ice. I need to refill my glass. What? Uh, okay, so you're just gonna leave me here. Um, oh, so did, did you, you walk? Did, you, did I go? No, I didn't. No, I was basically covering over why okay. Atticus is there in this book. Okay, That's so the. To get into the extra fun reason that he ends up being there, which is not the original reason that he thought he was going to be there. Um, obviously, he's there to train Granuel and everything else that Ian said. But um, oh, I didn't mention that. I only talked about the the the, the shape shifting into Atticus and being killed by the Thunder Gods at the beginning of the book. Okay, um, so that's that's the catalyst that puts him there that helps him actually get in into that kind of a situation. Um, but that, that, that's a part of a deal that he has with coyote. Um, probably mute yourself. Um, so he, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm thinking about parts of the book and it makes me laugh. So he, he's actually in coyote's debt, so to speak, to get himself onto the native American land, which essentially allows him to hide with that. Atticus now has to provide some services for a coyote, which when I say that sounds super sexual, it's not. Um, so he, uh, in effect, he not only does he have to help out with the blessing way, but he can't help perform it. He essentially has to help keep everybody safe. He's keeping everybody safe from skinwalkers, which is an old version of the witchery way, which allows people to wear skins these, these skinwalkers have essentially bound themselves with evil spirits, evil first world spirits, and have allowed themselves to be able to shapeshift. So they can put on a bobcat skin and turn into a bobcat with obviously supernatural speed and strength because, I mean, why else would you turn into a bobcat and give your soul to an evil spirit? Duh. Um, <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so you... Uh, in, they turn into all, they turn into multiple things, but when they're in their human forms, they are still superhuman, fast, and strong. So the whole time where they're the ho this Hogan is being built, and if you're watching, you see me use my hands to pantomime Hogan. Uh, if you're listening on SoundCloud, it's essentially if you can think of a TP, but it's all out of wood, like straight up. The whole thing is built out of wood, and it's just a giant structure. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily that. come to a point, but it is a cone-ish type of shape. Um, yeah. Think of an octagon-shaped hut almost, um, yeah. where like full logs are used instead of instead of boards. Right. Uh, and while this is being built, they perform part of the blessing way every night. So they bless part of the building every night as the building itself is being built. This building, this blessing, keeps the skinwalkers out. The skinwalkers don't like that they're there because it's their territory. Coyote wants a gold mine placed underneath all of that in order to spur the Native American economy and allow them to produce 
did the gold will finance a wind and like solar and natural energy farm essentially uh, on Navajo land in the middle of the fucking desert because reasons. So that's Atticus's job is no reasons. Yeah. So Atticus's job is to move the gold, which he can't do himself. He has to talk an elemental into doing it. Elemental says, I'll do it, but you have to go deal with these coal mines and keep them shut down permanently. Um, so he does a little side trip, go boop, runs off, takes care of some coal mine stuff and destroys machinery. But just, he just unbinds stuff and rebinds it to where it's worthless. And it's just a giant slag of metal. Uh, in that process, fun little side trip that he makes again from that side trip. We're now on two side trips. Um, he gets shot by one of the skinwalkers. And Coyote has to take him to a different plane, but to a Native American plane. So he ends up taking him down to, I think it's Third World. I don't really, re I think it's Third World. It's Yellow World. Yes. I know he calls it that. You skip um, something. What did I skip? You skip the lady, the uh, widow McDonough showing up first. Oh yeah, so widow McDonough shows up. Hell is inside and actually sloughs off her skin, and Atticus gets super fucking pissed at that, like really mad. <laughs> um, and she essentially, I don't think she cuts him with it. No, she just pulls out a knife and then, states that the next beast that is cut with this knife will not. Uh, their hunger will not be satiated until they consume what I advise them or whatever it is or something along those lines. So right. she goes and she sets not Gutnir because that's the fucking, that's the boar. Garm. 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 Yes. Okay. So she cuts Garm and Garm is now set on hunting down Atticus and she back also to the skinwalkers, and that's why they're after him. She because the the whole like they're not only after him because it's a territory. The skinwalkers are after him because the whole time they're chanting and telling the Native American people inside the Hogan, "Give us the white man," uh, yeah. which is him. So, and the the blade's name is Famine, which she pulls out of her chest essentially because she is half like supermodel, half zombie, um, and <clears throat> so. I, didn't mean to skip that whole part, but now we'll move on to the part I was talking about. Um, one of the skinwalkers shoots Atticus in the throat, and he's in the process of bleeding out, trying to heal himself and stop that. Uh, Coyote happens to show up and takes him down to a different Native American plane. I think it's Third World, but I know he references it. Um, he ends up having to move him from that point to Blue World, which I think is Fourth World, because Garm finds him. Garm is the fun as Ian mentioned, uh, is Hell's Hound that can travel planes. He tracks anything, anywhere. He's Hell's eyes and ears across the planes. Uh, so he's got Atticus's scent and is trying to find him. Atticus ends up shape-shifting into a sea otter, floats across the river, gets on the other side, uh, hangs out for a little while. Coyote comes back and finds him later, takes him back. Uh, the goal gets moved. Essentially, they end up making it out. The skinwalkers end up. I don't. He kills them. He does. There's a poisoning thing where they made a bunch of cattle troughs and, yeah. and then they made regular earthly pharmaceutical poisons to, to slow them down and things along those lines. And eventually we kill them. Man, you have spent a lot of time on the one book that we have both agreed is kind of filler. Like, I swear to God, the amount of time that you've spent on this one book, we've gone through the first three. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just throwing that yeah. out there. Yeah, and well, I mean, I, I want to give people the accurate description, um, and that's probably it. So, But and towards the end of it, yeah, they end up killing the Skinwalkers, and then essentially the book ends up just kind of dropping off an ending um, in order for it to pick up on the next one. The hell was the name of the next one? I can't even remember. Uh, the next one is trapped, uh, and that is because that allow that's the point where Granuel has, is now ready to become a full druid. She's finished her twelve years of training. That's right. This is where she's we're ready in to be bound. 
future because when when this was originally released in 2011 it was it was supposed to be day and date present day type of stuff but the the druid studying and things along those lines takes 13 years and well, so by the time we get to trapped grindrail is at the end of her of her studies and we're trying to find a place where they're able to bind her to the earth uh i'm gonna go ahead and take over i don't know if you were ready for this one so i mean stop me at any given point if if i miss anything basically what it is is they need to find a place where they can find a thorn bush and a safe place to be able to tattoo her because you have to use a living thorn bush that is um, currently connected to the ground, for lack of a better term, um, to 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 bind someone to the earth. Uh, it is a long, arduous process. That tattoo takes forever. Uh, it is not a real tattoo uh, because I I don't I don't have one. This is my right arm. I don't know how it shows up on the camera, but it's my right arm. I don't have one of the here. You know what? There's my right foot. And as I got no big spots of black ink on the heel, is what I'm trying to show there, which I'm totally sure. Have not. you thought about doing it? Have I thought about getting the tattoo? Yes, but if I got it, I would have to make it way thicker than I've seen in any cosplay or anything along those lines. I mean, it would have to be like a sleeve. It would have to be like the full like like breadth of the arm would have to be most of it. And then, and then the twist. It would have to be minimum of a one inch band. I mean, you're, you're talking minimum of a solid one inch, maybe an inch and a half band. Well, see, I still have yet to go get my first tattoo. And then I've got like three other tattoos that I want to get after that. Once I find out that I'm manly enough to be able to handle one tattoo, which I'm going to do soon, real soon. I think, it will, be, it. I think it will be my brother's wedding present. Yes. Yes, so you're gonna get he, a tattoo he gets married. I'm gonna go get a tattoo because that's logic that works in my head. I'll so, go with you. I need okay. to get another one. Well, you're all right. We'll work something out. You're gonna need to take some time off because it'll be on one of my days off in the middle of the week. Um, so basically, what's going on in this book is we are trying to get to a spot where Granuel and Atticus could get to a point where they could bind Granuel to. The, to Gaia, to the Earth, and get that done completely. Um, unfortunately, some shenaniganery is happening, and the only place that they could do it is Mount Olympus. Now, Bacchus is currently fucking pissed off at Atticus. We kind of gleaned over that earlier. We are gleaning oh, over. We, we didn't go over why he's pissed off, did we? No. I mean, we talked about the Bacchans because I needed to talk about why he was going to Asgard to get the apples, but... We're going to kind of glean over some of like the small stuff to kind of maybe sate you into buying the books if you haven't listened to any of the books or purchased or read or somehow absorb the books other than what we're telling you. So from here on out, we're going to try to kind of drunkenly gleam through this shit. So Bakken, Bak, 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 Bakken, Bak, Bacchus. Bacchus, thank you. I wanted to say Bacchanalia again, but that's... That's not even the right thing again. Uh, Bacchus is fucking pissed and is looking for Atticus. And uh, eventually they're like, well, we have to stop the binding because Bacchus is in the area and we need to you know, stop and figure this out. Um, so a lot of things kind of conspire during this. Um, in this book, man, I can't remember a lot of specifics that happened in this because everything that happens at the end of this like fucking like sprawls into the next book, like headlong into it. We'll get into that in a second. You'll understand why I say that. But it's kind of one of these things where we kind of bury down into it and we finally get to a point where, like, I'm not sure any other real major side stories uh, to the point where they have to basically take some of the tree goddesses out of the tree and put them on the time islands in Tirnanog so that they could get pandemonium to stop, which is being caused by not Bacchus, but the other god that's like the Greek and the Roman, it, whew, this gets convoluted at some point, and Ian's drunk brain cannot deal with it. So it, it gets down to the point where they're they're taking these fuck, what were the terms of these? I don't remember. Fucking tree things. They they pull the gods out of the trees. I just heard the name. The dryads. Dryads. Thank you. 
this is why I keep you around. This is why I pay you the big bucks. Um, so, <laughs> so they take out the dry ads. They get the pandemonium. Click on those ads, people. Yeah, yeah. Click the ads. If you didn't, restart this video and let that pre-roll run. Don't skip it. Um, so, <laughs> so <laughs> they pull out the dryads, they, they put them on the time islands, uh, they get Granuel set, they're good to go. Uh, now the dryads are still on the time island and, uh, Mercury and Hermes show up to Tirnanog as, I think it's as he's introducing Granuel to the rest of the Tuha de Danon as, you know, here's the new druid I've been working on for 13 years. And they're like, hey, buddy, these dryads are missing, and we know who did it, so do something about it. Fix it. And so they're like, oh, shit, hang on. We're going to, we, we got to go fix. We're going to go, go fix that. So they fix that. But, hold on. But, so some shit goes down. Fuck, I'm really, like, fucking up the synopsis of this one, but we, we got to get on because this is running long. Um, so by the end of this book, Granuel is bound to the earth. The Olympian, Olympians and the Roman gods are fucking pissed at Atticus and Granuel. Granuel and, uh, and so here you've got their goddesses of the hunt, which is fucking is right. Man? Thank you. Yeah. They're coming after them. They're coming after them. The Morgan like comes and says, Hey, fucking run. And that's the no. end. That's the end of Trapped. Which I mean, there was a whole lot more that happened in Trapped. I think that was the The big reason the big reason why the goddesses have come up um are is 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 twofold. And this will get us into hunted. Um so <clears throat> so other than the dryad piece. Um, Faunus has started to cause pandemonium and he is essentially keeping them from shifting out. They don't get to move. That's the whole reason why the dryads were sundered, essentially. That's um, right, because the only place right. that they the could shift they could to was Mount Olympus and then they couldn't get out. They were stuck. They yeah, were trapped. Um, it had to be a European plane. It couldn't be anywhere right. in the Americas right. or anything like this. And there's a whole lot of convolution going on to, to cause that. And well, that actually is going to be made present throughout the rest of the synopsis here. Oh, um, oh, oh, hold on. I want to say it. Lord Grundlebeard. We haven't even gotten to that part yet. No, he was in that one. Because he was supposed to be the, the, oh, the yeah, guy that was right. the head yeah, of the he yeah. all of them. They were all disrupted. Yeah. Hey, I remember hey. saying. Hey. Right. There you go. Hooray. I got a name right. <laughs> One name right. <laughs> so, um, it's, and while, while they're working on fixing the dryad situation, uh, Bacchus is running around with, with eh, a couple of his Bacchans uh, around Mount Olympus. And this will – it causes a confrontation – Atticus ends up kicking him into a portal on one of the time idol on one of the time islands, and that's what causes the two huntresses to be on their tail. So fast forward into hunted, the Morgan says, "Run! You have to run. You can't shift anywhere. You have to run all the way to England and get to Hearn's Forest, which is essentially Windsor Forest." Um, <clears throat> there's a bunch of fun shit that happens on their run across Europe. Um, Atticus, one of which. Spoiler alert for Hunted. If you haven't read it and you're watching this and we've been spoiling shit the entire way, be prepared for this. I was Pause driving. I was driving home from work and I hit chapter 10. I tweeted <laughs> this to Kevin Hearn. He liked it, that sadistic fucker. Um, I'm, I'm just joking if you're watching. Sorry, I love your work. Um... I was driving home and I hit chapter 10 and this is a situation where they're, they're running as fast as they can. And, um, a sniper takes out Atticus like done bullet through the head. head. He's done. Yep. He's actually in mid sentence and it, yep. it just stops. Yep. Right. Right. Um, then and there. And so he actually gets to use 
the one charm on his necklace that he hadn't really talked about at all. Um, and it's, he called it a soul catcher, which essentially it, it did multiple things at the same time. It bound his spirit to himself, like to his body. Uh, and it essentially, it was, it triggered his healing charm. So as long as he was, he had access to power, he had no problems there. And it took photographs of his brain and every neuron and synapse and everything that was firing like every three seconds. That way yeah. it, healing charm could rebuild his brain to the most recent quote unquote image. So think, uh, but, think if you will, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, bro. Uh, think if you will, the current Xbox one system, whenever you tell it to Xbox record that where it is currently re recording, I think it was like the last five minutes or so of, of what had happened. So let's say Atticus takes a bullet to the head and all of a sudden he screams out Xbox record that as he falls to the ground and dies for a split second of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, normally we're talking about video games and nerd culture, so I had to like kind of loop it around. Welcome to the Late Night Enforcers. I'm so, I'm so stupid. Xbox recorded that. Don't say that. You have my connect. All of a sudden, your Xbox is recording the porn you're currently watching on the big screen. Shh. Share it. No, it's off. Um, so, so, I'm sorry. So um, I, Atticus I, dies. Atticus dies. Uh, no, no. Honestly, I, I feel like that's, a, that's an adequate analogy. Um, so, essentially... Uh, Atticus dies, he gets buried, Granuel and Oberon end up taking off, and they're getting ready to square off with the Huntresses. As they start, Atticus, like, at the same time, Atticus is in the process of coming back. He goes through a little depressionary monologue, and he catches up with them. They end up taking out the Huntresses the second time there, uh, and that's when shit starts to get hairy. They end up getting to the two Hearns Forest, fight the Huntresses for a minute. Atticus turns into super fucking boss man and essentially draw and quarters them. And he just, he has them dismembered arms and legs, leaves their heads on and encases them in rock, puts them in the earth. Uh, calls Zeus down, has a little conversation with the Thunder Gods, blah, blah, blah. A truce has ended up. Not the Thunder Gods. We're talking about Zeus and Jupiter, which are the God Gods of the Roman and the... Uh, um, and the they Greek are also... Thunder gods. Are they both thunder gods? I th yeah. Well, no, I guess you're right. Sorry, I. One of them has an erection the entire time. My finger <laughs> looks old as fuck. Look at that. Look at that right there. That is a wrinkly ass fucking knuckle. That is you like old, a test. That is a testicle wrinkly ass knuckle. Look at that. That's disgusting. I am. I am ashamed of my finger. That's probably what it was like looking at Zeus's erection the whole time. Well, very true. I'll give you that much. But it was you no, know, okay. they didn't see it. It was just a loincloth that was lifted. Oh, oh, I could give you an example. No, I'm not gonna go ahead. But it's not. I'm putting my foot up in front of the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> you, you never know what goes down here on the late night enforcers. You just never know. Especially when we've had enough whiskey as we've had. Speaking of which, drink break. Oh, oh, hold on. Yeah, clinks. Uh, right, right to the camera. It's clean through. Oh, and check it out. I'm drinking it through my um, Omaras. Omaras. Fuck, my mom's going to be pissed. I said it wrong. She's going <laughs> to kick my ass. So, uh, essentially, a, a, a treaty is kind of brought up to where the Olympians cease hunting uh, all druids and the druids don't fuck around with them. They kind of aggressively ignore one each other, but they also go to help each other out in Ragnarok. Um, and from that point, it moves on to Atticus searching out who is really controlling all of his bullshit. Who is it that kept them trapped? Who is it that is divining Granuel's presence and allowing the Huntresses to track them? Because if you remember earlier, Ian brought up the fact that Atticus can't be divided, his location can't be reliably tracked. Well, Grotty Whale can, because she isn't bound to iron the way Atticus is. Uh, Even so, she, she has an amulet at this time. She just hasn't had the time to be able to... Yeah. Uh, 300 years is a long time. 
Well, no, no, no. 300 years is what it took for him to figure it out. Right, it's, but it, 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 you could consider – it's not going to take her an afternoon. It's going to no, take her – I would – I would if I say remember, it doesn't take her 10 to 20 years. to. I think it was 30 years is what he said it would take once once he taught her how to do it. Yeah, because he can teach her the theory and he can show it to her in the magical spectrum. But at the same time, her actually doing it is still going to take a specific amount of oomph. And as, as a new druid, there's a lot of experience there that she doesn't have to be able to figure that out. Did you and it's even mentioned it's later on in the book. Huh? Did you just say it's going to take a certain amount of oomph? Yeah. We're, we're done after this. You know that, right? <laughs> On the last and final episode. <laughs> the final episode of the Late Night Enforcers. He's going to fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Moving on. Um, so, uh, it's... Atticus goes through Tiernan Oak to try and figure it out. He has an idea By that it could way, be near. By the way, we are on Shattered now, which we haven't stated. No. Be- no? No, we're not on Shattered yet. We're still on uh, Hunted. Oh, that's right, because this is where we run into my friend, the Manticore. Yeah, see, I was going to guess that. Um, yeah, I'm actually about to get there. Uh, and and I'll, I'll let you take over from that part. So he, he goes... Grandiwell is currently recuperating in Govnu, who is essentially the god of beer and smithing and stuff. Um, he's he, he's a craftsman god, uh, but his primary thing is booze other than crafting other things. Uh, so he he lets Grandiwell recuperate there. And while that happens, Atticus says, I'm going to go to the cabin and pick up some stuff. But he sidetracks on the way. And kind of, he goes back to Ireland, runs the back door into Mir's castle or Sheed. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's all up in that back door. Um, and <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and then he ends up getting a, a, you know what? We'll use the word accosted. Is that eaten is really more the appropriate word uh, by what he calls nom, pie holes. Nom nommed. Nom, nom. <laughs> he, he turns into tasty nom noms. The tasty nom noms. For, <laughs> for some, some mouths with multiple rows of teeth and mouths on their hands so that they can bite and then bite. Masturbation uh, is difficult for these guys. I'm just going to go I ahead and throw that they out there. Probably don't because, I mean, they are bastard children of the Dada. So, but how do they, like, how. <sighs> I, I just I, I can't I can't imagine having a reproductive organ that I can't slap around a little bit when I feel like it and having a mouth well, on you know what actually hold point. on masturbation is probably really easy as long as there's lips on there there's some way to kind of you know what this is turning dark let's uh, Ryan take over before I fuck shit up <laughs> so it was it was going to be a at this point, Kevin Hearn, if you're watching, drop up in the comments on how exactly the pie holes reproduce, but why it doesn't matter. They all die anyway. Um, he ends up, Atticus ends up running, th- finally being able to hobble, literally hobble his way because half of his left side is uh, down a good couple of pounds of muscle um, through the through the estate to run into the Anticor. It's the second time he's seen him because in in the earlier part of Hunted, they take a detour into Germany and end up trying to use an old way to get into Chernobyl and see the Manticore and back off it. Um, so he sees him again, and this is where the Manticore gets to poison him. And would you like to take over because this is your buddy? Sure. Let me real quick. I, I don't mean to plug anybody else's YouTube channel because I'm not getting paid for this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. If you guys have never listened to Ninja Sex Party's song about the Manticore, Pause us, go listen to that, come right back. I said pause us, new tab, new window, something along those lines. Listen to Ninja Sex Party talk about the Manticore, and come back. Welcome back. All right, wasn't that a fantastic song? Okay, so this is not anything like that. Can we, but, let's, let's make sure we at least put a link in the description for that too. So I'll get you that. And this could have been edited out, but we're not going to. 
Because we don't in, edit shit around these parts. We're indie and we do this shit on the fly, bro. So the Manticore is is an interesting beast. God damn it, I'm gonna cough again. I can't find my mute. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I love this shit. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So the Manticore, so this is when we go into, and I'm sorry to say this, I really am, of course, if the author is listening to this, I really hate to say this, this is a trope that kind of fell into in in some of these books near the end where Atticus is in great peril and we have to listen to him or read about him getting through that great peril. It uh, the first time listening to him deal with the manticore, it was a little difficult because it was like, oh, okay, well, he shot me in the leg. Okay, so now I'm having to use up my bear charm to try to like fight off the toxins, and then I got to also try to use some of the the magic to to break through this ground and get down into the ground, which sh- should be here, but for some reason, what was that god's name? I can't even remember that one's name now. Mir. Mirror. That's yeah. right. Um, I need to get through this tile to be able to get to the earth so that I can actually like drain from it while I'm in Tirnanog, I think. I can't remember now. Um, yeah. But so he had to do that. Then he had to build a wall of tiles to be able to scooch his ass literally to the kitchen to get some chicken for the protein he needed to rebuild the shit that the pie holes did. I'm going to go ahead and pause right here, and I don't want to interrupt you, but I kind of have to. As as a lifter, I always wonder, does Atticus keep, like, protein shakes on around the house? Like, when, when that shit goes down, he's always looking for actual meat, which if he, all he's looking for is protein, he could just drink, like, full yeah, protein bro. shake. Just make a shaker. Just just shake it up, you know, with that really fucking annoying rattle ball. Excuse me while my hand works its way down a little bit further. <laughs> Sorry, that was really uncomfortable for anybody that's watching on YouTube. For those of you on SoundCloud, I was making a fast sexual gesturing motion with my hand and slowly moved it off camera towards my genitalia area. Not that those were on camera. But please feel free to go to YouTube <laughs> if you want to see it. Where's plug, my right? Where's plug? Um, so, no, but I mean, that's always, that's always something I wonder about because this type of thing has happened like from Hunted up until the current part of, up until the end of State. The dude needs protein at some point uh, just because he's getting like slices of muscle shaved off of his fucking body. So, it, I don't know. It was just something I would think about, like, okay, I get, to, like, where you are, yes, you have to eat what you have, but why you not, like, lift, lift. yeah, essentially, <laughs> do you even lift, bro? <laughs> do you know how to make shake, bro? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, but then again, he might not want to because a lot of those shakes are, are you know, they're synthesized proteins. They're not... Well, that, protein. Yeah, that guy could do whatever he wants from the herbology that he learned from, and I'm not even going to try to say it now. I'm into my second bottle of... Dian Kecht? Yeah, sure. We're going to go with your pronunciation of it. Down in the comments, go ahead and correct him. Or video replies on YouTube. Feel free to do that. That's uh, kind of the way that it is for Luke Daniels. That's fine. That's that's. It's the herb, it, it's the herb lore of Aramet that was brought to him by from uh, Aramet that was brought to him by Dan Keck. I hate to say this, Luke Daniels, if you're listening, there are some words that maybe it's just me right? that I think that you may have pronounced wrong, and that might just be me. Well, so you also got to think he might get his pronunciation from, you know, Kevin Hearn as well. So, again, we we are not pronunciation experts as we have fucked up normal words this evening. Yeah, well, let me let me just let me just put this out there. When I went to college, my degree is in audio engineering and I work in auto finance. So, just keep that shit in mind when you're writing hateful comments 
down below or however SoundCloud works. I think it fits within the, in the I'm making hand gestures to sine waves and it doesn't. And that, yeah, it's for, so for the SoundCloud comments that actually comments at the specific timestamp, uh, which I think is kind of cool, but we, we encourage all comments, whether it be trolls, whether it be hateful and honest and whether it be awesome and, you know, building us up. We don't care. We just want yeah. you to tell us that we're stupid. Yeah, you want us. You want to take two seconds out of your time, right here, right now, at the time that you are, and state how dead fucking sexy I am compared to Ryan. <laughs> God damn! Says the hippie who can't stop coughing. Fuck you, for one, and for two. I don't know what's going on with my voice. But if you want to go ahead and say so, how dead sexy I am compared to Ryan, go ahead and put that in right right here, right now, right there. Okay. Right. More? Okay. Back to the books. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So to continue, um, he I did have a problem with the wall that he built. If I felt like the wall was like 10 inches high versus like two feet. Um, and I don't know, but I, it seems a little bit risky to me. Uh, because a normal person, considering he had to crawl his way there on his chest, is a normal person is more than 10 inches wide. So a 10-inch high wall, Manticore probably could have hit him if he would have just, like, spammed the entire thing with his spikes and, like, hit him in the arm and taken him out. All he needed was one more, maybe two. If he hit him with two, he was definitely done. But I don't think Atticus could have survived another shot. Okay, keep in mind, though, every tile that came up exposed <laughs> fresh earth. So the more ground that he was in contact with on the right side of his body, which is where his tattoo is, because we didn't really cover his tattoo in any way, shape, or form through any of these books. No, but if you uh, if you read or pick up Hounded, it covers the tattoo, and it consistently talks about it throughout the book, so make sure you do that. Bingo, bango, whiskey tango. Whiskey tango. Well, drink good. break. No. Uh, drink break. No, I definitely understand what you're talking about. But I had a feeling... It makes feeling... sense. But, like, to me... To me, I was like, okay, like if it, if it were me in his position, that wall is not high enough. Um, but that's that's going a little bit too in detail. You know, we still got two books to go through here. Shit, um, we do. So he gets through. He ends up getting to the chicken area, and then he ends up getting out um, to the chicken area. <laughs> to the chicken area, just because that's the place where the chicken is. Uh, he apparently <laughs> eats an entire chicken, an entire chicken, and half of a ham by himself. Like that's like I slayed chest for three hours and now I need to eat type situation. <laughs> I, um, okay. For those of you who don't lift, what he just said was that means I lifted bro on my chesticle type area for my, for my breast muscles to be, to be firm and sexually appealing to the feminine um, side of the species. Side note, I'm currently overweight a little bit, and uh, and Ryan has given me a workout plan to start working on. I can't walk How normally. Feeling, buddy? I can't walk normally right now. Just, just, just total side note, I can't work walk normally. It is a five-day program. Uh, I had to not do it tonight because I seriously think I've, I'm hindering my ability to walk from leg day four days ago. So uh, don't understand. skip it. Understand that if you chose not to do it today, that means you have to do it tomorrow. Mm, mm, no, I got, I, I got people coming over. And I got another podcast I'm recording. Well, then you, you got to do it one of those two days or you got to do a double of it on Sunday. You know what? I'm glad we're not currently going to the gym together. Move back to the book there, buddy boy. <laughs> uh, so we'll uh, – yeah, so – Essentially, he ends up getting out. They end up going to Japan. Uh, he grabs Granuel and Oberon. They run to Japan to heal. And in the midst of that, he remembers something that the Morgan told him that we completely fucking glossed over. Um, which is, there's, you know, it's fine that we glossed over it. Um, before the Morgan died, she left him a parting gift. Um, because right before the Morgan died, a big part of Hunted is the fact that she held off two goddesses of the hunt in a sword duel with one sword and a shield and had a mental conversation with Atticus while he was running for his life and essentially just stopped fighting and died because she didn't care no more. She did not give a single fuck 
Well, let's let's put it in the in the great context of what we find out later on. She was actually in love with Atticus and realized that she couldn't have him and she also couldn't change her own way because of the system of belief in the chains of belief they end up creating God and gods and goddesses. So she loved him in the way that she could love him and sacrificed herself in the way that she could to make sure that he was safe and alive. So when I made the joke earlier about the rough sex with the Morgan, that's that's actually one of my favorite characters in the series as well. I didn't point that out when we were talking about her earlier, but Due to what she did, she's 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 a really cool character because of what she did uh, for. She's a, very, she's a very pivotal character. I think she's vital to the story, and I like that she comes back eventually. Um, so he Atticus ends up re remembering the parting gift, which ends up being, and I'm going to fast forward a little bit into the next one, which is shattered. Um, it ends up being his arc druid. Morgan put the arc druid Owen O'Kennedy or Owen. Kennedy, as it will later be known, uh, on one of the time islands. Atticus has to go get him off. I'm rubbing my eye right now just because something got in it. Um, a tear. It's okay. You can it's cry. It's a tear for the Morgan. It's a, it's, no a safe, it's, a safe, it's a safe area, man. You can do that. Nobody's going to judge. Judge, this, this, judge this, down this, below. Judge down below in the comments below or in the timeline currently in there. Tell Ryan how much of a giant fucking vagina he is and how dead sexy I am comparatively. Oh, I can't do this anymore. No, we've oh. got to. We've got to finish Shattered and Staked. I quit. I'm done. Bye. No. Uh, shit, I gotta do this alone. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, so, <laughs> um, can you, do you, do you want to run through Shattered real quick? Uh, I was kind of kind of hoping that you would take the beginning of it. Okay, no. I'll do it. I just I didn't know if I was talking too much, but that's fine. People, you are, but mouth. I, I, I need to pee, and nobody wants to watch my face go from really excited to really like, holy shit! I'm gonna have to clean this up later. <laughs> well, that's okay. People like to hear my sexy voice. So, ru running through shattered, um, real quick. He goes. He he gets Owen off the island. He kind of explains some things to him. Uh, he expl he brings he catches him up on a lot of the shit that's gone down within the storyline that everybody at this point kind of knows. Um, he has to break that down to him while he's getting his tattoos touched up because one of the manicure uh, spikes ended up ruining one of his shape shifting bands, and then he he wouldn't have been able to come back into human at that point. So he tells Owen everything, catches him up, says, "Hey, there's some bullshit going down here in Tierra No. I'd like to know if you can help me out." Uh, you know, kind of snoop around a little bit, see if you can figure some shit out on who's actually coming after me. Owen's kind of wary about it, but he does it on the sly later on in the book. Um, because Owen has to actually meet with a few of the two at Data and anyway, now that he's back in the normal flow of time and is essentially back in the world. Uh, he tells him that what he really wants to do is start a grove and start training more druids because at this point in the book, there are now only three druids. There's Atticus, there's Granuel, and there's Owen. Owen is going to eventually do a grove like he wants to. You know, Whoa, he, you are jumping away the fuck ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm prefacing the next book at this point. Good, um, good idea, actually. But, but running through Shattered, Owen, while meeting with the other gods, kind of says, yeah, you know, I want to do this new grove, but he's on the slide trying to figure out who does or doesn't like Atticus and is using that information to surmise who's actually trying to kill him. Uh, and at, at one point, he comes up on, they come up to the holiday, Samhain, which, and if he wants to at this point, he can jump so, in and get a little bit more in-depth so on it. I'm, I'm not going to be preachy on it, but I had always pronounced it Samhain. Now, I don't have a, a physical copy of the book, because really when... I, I only have the first two books in physical form because I don't want to be that guy that shows up to see Kevin Hearn that's like, sign every single fucking copy I've got. I'd like to meet the guy multiple times. I'd like to have every book signed. I would also like to have every book in case if the fall of society happens that me and Ryan are both prepared for. Do not come find us. We will gun you down and take your food. Um, 
uh, if that happens, I want to at least have the physical written word so that I can at least read this to my child at some point. He's laughing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but he's down at the bottom laughing his ass off because he knows I'm right. Uh, I want the physical word to be able to read it to him. Uh, not that I think it's a preachy word or anything along those lines, but I enjoy the story enough to be able to extend it into the into the future after society crumbles because it will, Illuminati and whatnot. Um, the fuck was I saying? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I lost myself in my stupid ass rant. Uh, so I always pronounce it Samhain. And this is this is the holiday that is celebrated around what, what most people refer to as Halloween, uh, All Saints Day, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is the time when the veils between the dead and the living are as thin as humanly... Humanly possible so you've got the ability to speak with the dead easily uh and also the dead have the ability to speak with the living as easily as possible back to ryan since he was talking about the book yeah so uh he acts atticus ends up having man and him a clear uh and owen he died and in the last book by the way i don't know if we covered that what? oh wait no no he didn't die Mirror no. died. Mirror, Mirror died. died. Mirror, Mirror was died. chained up and iron his throat was cut. Like Mirror was chained upside down like fucking Judas Iscariot in iron and his throat got cut. Yeah. Uh, above the ground. Yeah. So he couldn't touch so, the ground. I'm pretty yeah. he, like, he was all kinds of fucked. There was so much fuckery going you done. Uh, which is so the whole reason that this is the whole reason that Menonin was there. Um, he, Owen brings a revelation to Atticus that says it's probably Fand, which is Manon's wife, who's also the queen of the Fae. The Fae love Fand. Briad is the first among the Fae and the actual ruler. Oh. So there's a little bit of a political game going on there. Now, uh, here's, here's I, I'm sorry, man. I got to interrupt you for a second. I'm not sure if this was something you were about to touch on. This is something that you need to remember from what I stated earlier about his iron druidness is if a fae attempts to touch him, which is a fairy, they will burst into just a, a poof cloud of ashes, okay? So the queen of the fae, which is Fan, the fae fucking hate Atticus. Because he could kill all of them by a high five if they really wanted to, if he were really wanted to. Yeah, all he, like all he has to do is like they move, they give him like a six foot berth when he walks in in a crowd, just because it's not that he's the Godfather. It's they just don't want to die. It's um, not that he's the Godfather. I like it. So um, it's it's that's the revelation that's brought to him. But the thing is, is that Fand has always been so nice to him. Always been welcoming, always been providing hospitality, you know, giving them bacon and shit like that and making sure that they're well taken care of whenever they come up to the estate. Uh, so it's kind of a shock to Atticus and he doesn't really believe it. But he's not – at this point, he's not willing to rule anything out. Uh, so during Samhain, they run you – know, they, they light the, the right fires and they bring Mir – we, what they do is they have Menonin, who has taken over all the duties, instead of just half of them, of the dead, of ferrying the dead from place to place, um, have Menonin get Mir's shade. They ask Mir some questions. Mir provides that he that it was fanned, but there's no true identification because she was always cloaked, but he knew it was her. Uh, Menonin won't believe it, but he's going to go investigate it. Some bullshit goes down. The Morgan shows up, says something about the Dark Elves at that point, uh, I, I believe, and she brings it up again later, um, but does say go recruit the Dark Elves. They go back to Tiernan Oak to ask Fan what the hell, and then all hell breaks loose and it's a giant fucking coup. Uh, all the fairy that, F that Fan can grab, help her out. Govnu, spoiler alert, three, two... Govnu dies uh, in, in the fight. Let's see. That's it. I think only, yeah, only Govnu dies. Um, okay, and spoiler alert. And spoiler alert, yes. So I'll edit, I'll put timestamps in the description for all that so everybody knows 
when to fast forward and whatnot. Um, Welcome and, back to the conversation. If you skipped it, yeah, somebody died. Somebody died. We're not going to tell you who at this point because you should know. We're not. I whatever. Anyway, um, so they ended up imp imprisoning Fan in a an entire cell made of iron. Breed is working on bullshit with the Fae, and that book essentially ends. Okay. And now we get to the most fun part of the entire night, and the whole reason that we're that doing we're, this recording. And unfortunately, we're going to have to run through this book just as quickly as we ran through the last one, but this one is more of just a review. We're not going to actually go over the very specific stuff of it. We're going to go right. over like our what, thoughts. What we thought, what our reactions are. Yeah, because there's a lot that happens in this book that is... It's a, uh, like, there's a lot. Like, it's serious, man. Yeah. It, well, yeah, I mean, crazy. so as far as and I'm it, aware, it's this a book... Yeah, whoa. No, chapter 10 of Hunted, dude, it was the only chapter so far that has caused me to cry. Actually, I take, I take that back. I take that back. There was a chapter, I think it was in Tricked, where a particular vampire came to attack um, Atticus. And we skipped over this, but a particular vampire oh. came to attack Atticus and Oberon... Oberon got hurt, yeah. Oberon got hurt. I'm a dog lover. I'm a huge dog lover. In fact, at the particular night that we are recording this, I am currently in the process of finding my next companion, my next anim animal companion. Unfortunately, my last one, Shadow, passed away back in September of 2015. I miss her. A super bunch. Holy shit, I'm trying to fight back tears right now. Because yeah. I mentioned her, and I'm drunk. Um, but it's it's one of these things where it's like, you heard a fucking dog? That's not fucking right. So, I mean, that hurt me. Chapter 10 of Hunted hurt me. Personally, nothing in this one hit me what? that hard. That hard. Dude. So, so, okay. No. We're not going to get into specifics, but there is a character that eats it. In this one, that's that's. But, <laughs> but the way it happens is so quick. There's no it's quick, and it felt kind of emotionless at the time. And but listening to it again, I just there there wasn't the proper setup. I think no, there um, wasn't. It was kind of again. I really I like feel like the character was kind of thrown into the trash. Yeah. I, I really like the author's work. I I don't think, like I said earlier, I think Tricked was the the only book so far that was the least in the series. This was a very good book in the series, but this particular part of this of of the book made me feel like it was kind of like I don't want this character around anymore because I need this particular character to be stronger in the story. So well, this one needs to go away. So there we go. I can agree with you with that. And we're kind of delving a little bit too deep without saying it, saying anything about it. But I feel like a after listening to it a second time, and you, you, you might feel this way at the end of your second run through as well. Um, I feel like it, it was necessary to spur Atticus on his, spiritual path of atonement because th th there's a big theme of atonement in this book um when you run through it you'll you'll find some stuff when you run through the series you'll find some stuff out about granuel and what her motivation is for becoming a druid yeah uh, she ends up taking the first step along that path in this book um she discusses that with laksha kulasakaran who pipes pops back up in this book um who also discusses that Owen is on his same is on a is on a different kind of spiritual journey, which is more you, of. Hold on, I'm Owen sorry. Owen is focused on building a grove. I'm going to stop you right there. So we didn't really focus a lot. Actually, I think I might have been peeing when Ryan focused on this. If he did, um, um, Owen was 
Atticus's arc druid, right? Throughout the book, we are throughout the series, we are told how horrible of a person Owen was to Atticus. There is a very heartfelt like conversation between Owen and Atticus. That, was that in Shattered? No. Yeah, it was it was right it was right no. after you told him about Ben. No. Because this just happened in my second listen through of Staked, where he's like, hey, you're starting to grove? Go easy on those kids. Oh, yeah, but no. The bigger heartfelt one was when Owen apologized to him and told him that he was the most gifted druid he ever trained. I give, you, I give you that. I give you that. Now, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like throw my this family. Is Owen's emotions. Yeah, no, I'm not, and I'm not trying to throw my history in her shit. My dad stepped up and did shit that his dad didn't do. Let me put it to you that way. Oh, fuck, I'm way too drunk for this bullshit. Let me take a sip of whiskey. <laughs> you, are letting er uh, you are letting every heartstring just go. That's fine. I will. My dad stepped up and did shit that his dad didn't. And my, did, my, bleh, bleh, my dad didn't do, do shit that his dad did. So when it came to the fact where Atticus said, you know what? Go easy on these kids. And he was like, you know what? I probably should. That to me, that spoke to me in a, in a way that, that may, Ooh, fuck these tears that are about to start flowing. Um, that, that it spoke to me in a weird way that, that may not speak to other people, but, Certain things and certain families, certain people are <clears throat> fuck really strong and fight through certain situations that they grow through. Holy shit! Okay, hold on. I'm I'm getting through it. Uh, certain people did shit. They did good. God damn it. <laughs> so <laughs> let me Man, just say, loses it. Yeah. So let me just say, some people can change throughout their lives. Let me just do that. Move on. Ryan, continue so, talking. If you'd like to, look down in the comments right there and go ahead and say how much Ian is a big vagina. Fuck your giant asshole, you piece of shit. I'm going to go ahead and keep talking while how my finger is on the goddamn you? camera. And about how much better looking I am than he is. Go ahead and do that now. And you're done. So God damn it, I was muted. Hang on a second. Look at his hair <laughs> and look at how voluptuous mine is. So to uh to continue in, in our review of staked, um, there was a point similar to when Atticus died, when this character died, that we're kind of this is like the central point of the book for me. On on the on the second part of it, on my second run through, I felt like all I wanted to do was hear how Atticus was going to react. Was it going to be sad? Was it going to be white hot Celtic rage like it was when somebody else died in Asgard? Um, I can't say it otherwise, it'll give it away. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and interestingly enough, it, it went, I think it went like a good direction. Um, I don't think there was enough vengeance thrown into it, and I think there should have been a little bit more. But all in all, out of everything in the series, this book and Hammered are my two favorites. And the reason that Hammered is my other favorite is because it allows you to see deep into other characters and their reason for uniting together, right? Um you get to hear more about Gunnar Magnuson and about Zhang Wao Lao and about Vina Mirnin. Um, and Which are the I think names? hearing about, even though you don't hear from those characters again, um, I feel like those kinds of offshoots are good. And I wish there were more of them, but the way the story is progressing, I don't think there's going to be that many, many more of those kind of offshoots. Oh, hold on here. Because here is where I'd like to put in my pitch in case if Mr. Kevin Hearn is listening. Allow me to flip my hair for just a second in case if he needs a different person to read those. Now, Luke Daniels, you are a fantastic voice. But 
if you need somebody else to read this book series, I want to pitch to you right now. Owen is creating a grove. All right. There's, there's a book series waiting to happen. All right. I don't know if it's a young adult series that we could sell to the chillins or uh, or something that we could uh, continue after this. Kind of like a Harry Potter and the Weird Monsters of Monsters, which is the movie that's being made. Isn't there another Harry Potter book? Either way, you want to do another series, there's your idea. Focus on the Grove and the children that you've introduced in this book. I'm not, we're, we're not going to go into specifics of any of those kids, but they do a really good job of kind of laying just a very quick groundwork because, again, as far as Wikipedia and shit is concerned, this is the next to last book in the series. So. No. 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 That could lead to a few things happening. Now we he, have he multiple. Now, no, listen, he, he can't make this the end. Of, he can't make the next book the end of the series unless Christopher Farnsworth is going to seriously dive into his president's vampire series. Just okay. Saying. Okay. For one, you can't put shit on Kevin. All right, Kevin, you're my man. You're my current man. You, my man. You wrote a Star Wars book. You, my man. That's um, a really good one. That's a really I need, good one. I need to get that. I need to get that. But, Kevin, you need to sign a contract with Luke. Everything you write needs to be read by Luke because currently I drive an hour to work and an hour home. So this is how I enjoy your books is by audiobook. So everything I say pertains to how you wrote it and how Luke Daniels read it. Good voice. Star, no lie, dude. That Star Wars book is really good. Yeah? There's yep. another book series that I listened to that was really good. Not going to talk about it here because this is all about our man Kevin and Luke Daniels. Um, <laughs> Look at us throwing plugs out there looking for hope. Just a little bit. Maybe a signed <laughs> copy of Staked for <laughs> each of us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that we tried to go get when we, we tried. We little like I um, actually I Kevin, I was if, gonna have my dad do it. Like I actually asked my dad, what are you doing? Can you run out to this mall and go get two of these copies signed? So and Kevin he, wait, wait, I, hang on. Kevin, if you go back through your tweets and you look at my little uh you look at my I'm gonna I'm gonna point with my finger. You look at my little there Facebook or not Facebook, Twitter name. I asked you when you were you were in town. I asked you where you were going to be. I couldn't make it. And that's because my job, my bro couldn't make it because he was doing the parenting thing. And you're not going to, you're not going to knock the guy for doing that. We couldn't make it. We would have loved to have make it, made it. Shit. That fucking selfie photo would have been the, pro, the, oh the thumbnail for this. God, video. That would have been, that would have been it right I, there. I would have squeed. I would have squeed. Yep. Yep. I no lie, when he followed me back on Twitter at one point, he's unfollowed me since then. But when he followed me back on Twitter, I was like, mm -hmm. I, oh, I he that. Out, no lie. And I was at work at the time. I was like, what? Um, so all in all, the story of State, it, it shows it's it delves deeper into the vampire war and Atticus's uh, quest for retribution against the vampires taking out all the other druids in existence. Um, that's the basic premise of the book, and it it breaks all three of the current druids up. Instead of keeping them in a band all together, they all break up and go through their own things, and they've they all have actually, their own little side stories. They've and, actually done that in the past few books, or yeah, at well, least in, the past I mean, few books. We didn't we didn't touch okay. on that. There was there was okay. Shattered was the first one that did that, which is really interesting. I I like that, and I like that it that it kind of gives Luke Daniels a, a way to kind of reread. Like, I really hope we're not fucking up his voice doing chapters in Owen O'Kennedy's voice. But, man. He actually, he, he's got a little bit of Shattered on SoundCloud because Kevin Hearn's got a SoundCloud page. Um, and he's got, he's got a couple of excerpts of it, not long, like a couple of minutes. And then he's got a minute about, like, 
it's a four minute track, but probably two minutes of it are outtakes. Well, um, what, there was a track he shared. You shared it with me of like an Oberon rant that wasn't actually written by Kevin. Yeah, there were there were a couple of random tracks that Luke recorded for Kevin of there was an Oberon Christmas jingle. Uh, and then there was an Oberon other one. It, it's all on a SoundCloud page. I'll you tell you what. Her. Here's here's what we do, it, Kevin. If you take if you listen to this and you take anything from this and you do what my buddy Ryan has been preaching to me you do and make some weird like TV show out of this. Netflix it, dude. I'm telling you. Anybody gets any role, Luke Daniels gets Oberon. And I know you're looking at me and you're thinking, that's Atticus right there. I'm going to fucking cast this guy as Atticus. This guy can't act for shit, but I'm going to cast him. <laughs> if that's the case, Luke Daniels, your voice will always be Atticus O'Sullivan, but your voice will always be Oberon. So if there's any TV show, movie, or anything along those lines ever made, please, for the love of God, <laughs> rephrase that. For the love of Gaia, whatever you do, make sure that Luke Daniels is the voice of Oberon because for fuck's sake, if we get someone that voiced Scooby-Doo, I'm going to kill myself. Not literally, I'm just saying. I don't know. I might literally do it. No, I, I actually asked him at one point. You peak. No, I, I actually asked him at one point if he ever thought about trying to get a movie deal and he wasn't down for the movie deal or even an HBO well, special. Well, with what happened to Aragon, I don't blame him. I, I don't blame him either. I, I, think it, I think it would be hard to translate this series into a movie. Um, uh, I think an, an, an HBO or Showtime special could do no, it, but it would be Netflix but or I, Hulu could swing I it. I feel because, like Netflix. I feel like recently the way things have started to go, I feel like Netflix would be good. You know, they've got super dark series with Daredevil and Jessica Jones, um, and I feel like an Iron Druid one would fit well in that kind of catalog. All so, right, here we go. Here we go. Ian's going to interrupt again, and I'm going to put this in. Kevin. Kevin. Are you listening? Are you watching? All right. Put it in your reader, buddy. We pitched it. We at least get, you know, walk on rolls. A little scratch, brother. Just, just a little <laughs> bit. I need to not be driving a Chevy Aveo. Please. For the love of God. The paint is chipping. Help me. Oh, come on, man. Throw a turbocharger on that bitch. A turbocharger on a Veo? I'm probably going to throw the fucking engine out of the hood. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about cars. Unless it's about video games. Video games is what I'm used to talking about. We have gone on for quite some time. So, for those of you who have made it this far in our review of the Iron Druid Chronicles... And, and the Chronicles of Hernia, the Chronicles of Hernia, the gro holy shit. I'm, I'm not even going to bother holding up the books. Did you just say the Chronicles of Hernia? Yeah, that's actually a quote from Luke Daniels. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if now we don't get even a walk on roll or a mention as a special thanks in the TV show. <laughs> He's got it up on his SoundCloud tracks. That's fine. He can have it. We are no one. So <laughs> we don't have any any aspects to that. We so I ruined it. You did. So as 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 like a Siskel and Ebert type of thing, I would say staked. I give it two thumbs up. Oh shit! We're... It gets the deuce. Okay. The deuce. We got four thumbs up. We're gonna get like fucking sued for that shit or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Let's put that eyebrow down. Um, we're okay. We're fine. We're drunk. It doesn't matter. I'm drunk, and I led that, so you cannot sue me. Um, 
this is a good book. This is a good series. Again, as I stated, there was only one book in the series so far that I feel is the lesser of the, of, of, of the entire series. But there's got to be that one. Um, it's a vital as, point. I think it's a vital part. I think it's le- I think content wise, I agree, but I think in the scheme of the story, it's needed. Don't and I'm not arguing with you. I'm not. There was just more potential, but it wasn't taken. Mark it down, ladies and gentlemen. It's like the one time Ian and I are not arguing about something. Well, I mean, still I I still feel that it is the weaker of the of of the series. Maybe. But but it is uh it is it it's one of these points where we we strongly suggest if you are one of the late night enforcers fans and you have now listened to us talk through this the entire time we have ruined so much of the story but should I get a cough cough we, we haven't ruined so much you need to if not Pick up and read Kevin Hearn's Iron Druid Chronicles. There we go. You need to go ahead and download the Iron Druid Chronicles as read by Luke Daniels, who is a fantastic, the greatest. I swear to God, Uh, if this quite possibly one of the best voice actors around, if this becomes a show. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a petition. Luke Daniels plays Atticus. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what hair color you have because I can't. I cannot look up pictures of you. If I look up pictures of you, it will ruin the description of Atticus that I have because your voice to me is Atticus. So guess what? There's a TV show. You can bleach your hair and you're going to dye it blonde. Ah, uh, not blonde. Red, red. The fuck yeah. is wrong with you? I am uh, pretty drunk. Kill I'm yourself. Sorry. I'm you. Okay, <laughs> you got it. Let's finish this video first because this is not going to be on traces of death. <laughs> We're gonna. This is now a snuff film. <laughs> this is this has gone on too long. For those of you who have stuck through this. Luke or Kevin, if you, for some reason, have stumbled across this or found it on Twitter, Instagram, or whatever, holy shit, your face reacted to something. What happened? The phone. I looked at the time. Yeah, it's fairly late. It's 1223 as we're wrapping this up. Luckily enough, I don't usually go to bed till 1 o'clock. This is impacting my Ian loves Ian time. If you will get my meaning. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Again, the book series in a whole is a fucking fantastic series. We strongly suggest that people check it out. I am actually about to take these two books to a, to, to a friend of mine, and I'm going to lend them to him. We've actually turned on at least one friend so far to the series. She may not be a huge fan, but we, we turned her on, at least got her to purchase one book. Um, I'm going to take these two books to another friend, have her start them, and I'm going to tell her she's going to have to buy the rest of them because I've been giving her books and having her read those. I got my dad involved in it too. So we've, you know, we've, I, I promote the hell out of it just because I think it's a badass series and I think everybody should give it a whirl. If you don't like it after you start it, then you don't like it. Sometimes it's not everybody's bag, but at least give it a whirl. Hey, um, if it wasn't for Ryan... I wouldn't fucking listen to this shit. So there you have it. Yeah. You got two ignorant uh, motherfuckers telling you. Make sure you uh, drop a like. You know, it'd be nice if we can get up to about six likes. That would be great. Um, or more. You know, more is always better. But, you know, minimum of six is nice. Um, if you like the content we do, we've got 10 other episodes. Run through them. Drop a subscribe. Make sure you drop in the comments about how badass looking I am and how ugly Ian is. Fuck your um, face. Check and this also in the comments, let us know what you want us to talk about next. You know, we're always looking for tips and or for, hey, we want you guys to argue about this. What do you think about this? Sometimes we run out of shit to say and we just ramble on, which is probably what we've done for the last hour. Um, 
So do that. Hit us up on SoundCloud. Drop us a follow there if you don't have the ability to watch constantly. We are located there. For those of you listening there, we thank you. Download it. Keep it there. Give us a like. We like those. I like getting those notifications. It's definitely nice. And we're highly interactive. Drop us a comment. We will comment back. I promise you that. Um, otherwise, I don't got anything else. You got anything? Uh, I got a couple of quick things. So currently on the Late Night Enforcers YouTube channel, YouTube channel, if you're listening to us on SoundCloud, go check that out. Ryan has got a series of videos where he's playing Outlast, which I bought for him. Uh, and you can see him because of the connect that I lent to him. Where I'm at right now, as far as my spooky, scary games, is I'm waiting for this gigantic fucking vagina to finish playing Outlast so that I could get my connect back. I think we might we might figure out a way to get Ryan to connect so that we can we can space this out better next time. Uh, because There's usually a donate button in all of our video descriptions. Yeah, but you've donated a lot to Ian's ability to play games with you, so Ian may have to try to figure out a way to get you to connect because I want mine back. Um, because I got a, I've actually got an eight-year-old son that likes to stream Minecraft, so that's cool. Follow me on Fiend Seven Five Zero Zero. Oh, son of a bitch, I'm drunk. Follow me on Fiend75002 on Twitch. You may catch me doing some spooky shit, some retro shit. You may catch me with my son while he does some Minecraft shit. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. Catch my buddy here as much as I argue with this fucker. I love the hell out of him. Sleek Stealthy 85 on Twitch. He does what I pay him to do <laughs> which right now is horror games if i'm not doing that it's assassin's creed or maybe some destiny or some fps games there's some batman i kind of vary everything that i like to do but right now i am pissing myself every tuesday night at about nine o'clock on outlast and it's about to get worse if you miss it check out our youtube channel and i'm uploading all the all my streams in 30 minute segments so you don't get too bogged down with the horror um so yeah Otherwise, thanks for stopping by, everybody. We enjoyed it. We appreciate it. Uh, my horror stuff will start to come up on the channel afterwards because I don't want to over-impact his Outlast stream. Uh, stuff will come up. I will have horror stuff. It will come because people like watching people scream at bullshit. We do appreciate you swinging by. Uh, likes, subscriptions, uh, comments, negative, positive. We don't give a fuck. We are some strong-ass motherfuckers. We can handle your flame shielding ass and bullshit. This guy went, he was in the Marines. I wasn't. He's got it on his phone. I don't. Talk shit to him. Tell me I'm sexy. Thank you for spending this time with the Late Night Enforcers. Follow us on any way, shape, or form that you can. We've got all sorts of links and shit and names and things that you can follow at this. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Good night. It's 1230 where we are right now as we're recording this. I'm going to end this. You guys are the best. We love you. Check out Kevin Hearn. Check out anything Luke Daniels has done. Have a great night. I'm going to I'm going to hit this button. It's going to happen. Bye. There we go. I'm on it. Bye-bye.